I recently visited my sister who has always been a master hoarder to the point where she even hoarded my stuff, including a bunch of my childhood toys. And the memories came flooding back when I found them in her basement. My first two toys ever were these baby ones, a hen where, hear me out, if you blow in its butt or mouth it makes a noise. I'm obviously not going to do that because that would be some serious screenshot blackmail territory, but this is what they sounded like. The other baby toy was this car. Looking at it now, it actually looks a little bit creepy, but when you push it across the floor, its eyes bob up and down, and the button up top gives a classic baby toy squeak. I love this thing, and I distinctly remember my mom coaxing me to sleep by flipping its eyes up like this, and saying something like, See? Car car is going to sleep too, which probably worked at least 60% of the time. I always like looking up old stuff and was pleasantly surprised when I turned this hen upside down and saw the original manufacturer sticker bearing the name Ambi Toys, made in Holland, on the bottom. How this sticker stayed on all these years is a miracle, but regardless, I launched a short eBay investigation and found both of them. They really don't make toys like they used to. Holding both of them in my hand, they really are so solid feeling. Awesome. With my love affair of cars starting with that baby toy squeaker, the next two toys that never left my side as I entered toddlerhood were this clean, minimalist, futuristic space car and this Lancia LC2 Group C car, both by Choro Q. It's crazy how random, vivid memories get triggered just holding these. I mean, this space car yellowed like no one's business, spending a ton of time baking the sun while I ran around playgrounds because I took it with me everywhere. This LC2, on the other hand, has stayed in relative pristine condition. Even the stickers have stayed on really well. And the vivid memory is remembering my dad telling me I could take the space car anywhere I wanted, but the Lancia would have to stay at home. I don't remember him ever explaining his reasoning, probably recognizing I was too young to grasp why he liked the car and how he liked the martini livery in real life. <laughs> but I'm happy he made me keep it at home because man, this thing is beautiful. I think, by the way, that these two are theoretically quite rare because Choro Q cars, which are still in production today, are really only known for their stubby pullback racers, and this space car and Lancia Group C Whip definitely precede the design language that they're known for today, both of which have longer wheelbases. I mean, my folks also bought these Choro Qs for me later on, and they really are indicative of the brand's look caricatured stubby pullback racers, and although I still look at modern Choros at department stores when I go to Asia, these two OGs are by far my favorite. Try as I might, I couldn't find either exact versions on eBay, but I did find this one that's similar. But my goodness, that is expensive. In line with these Choro Q treasures, in preschool, my first girlfriend was a G. Even though Choro Qs weren't, and to my knowledge, still aren't available here in Toronto, she knew how much I loved those cars all the way back in preschool, and for my fourth birthday, she chose this dump truck because, again, weirdly vivid memory, she said, it can carry your cars, and my mind absolutely exploded when I saw this perfect fit. I must have done this hundreds of times in that first week. Chromed out grille, star rims, well anchored full metal cab and bed. This truck is great. I mean, there's no stamp insignia or logo of any kind anywhere on it, so I don't even know where to start looking for it, but I love this truck. Finally moving away from cars, this right here was that one toy where I lost my marbles when my mom came back from a trip and surprised me with it. I mean, look at it. I am six feet tall, about 181 centimeters, and this is the size of my adult forearm. So you can imagine as a five-year-old, this thing easily stood up to my thighs. This is Sentai Live Man, which predated and became the source material for the Power Rangers. So this is like OG OG Power Rangers. We gotta go beast by beast because this is where you can see how they really don't make toys like they used to. All right, head to toe, we got the Hawk. Flight mode, but also with a pull and rotate of these metal columns, there is a secondary locking point for perch mode. Fully articulating wings and flaps, and it's all about the details. I mean, look, wheels on the chest plate and the thigh so it could roll nicely on the ground. Lion, we've got fully articulating ankles and toes for complete posability, and as a kindergartner, the ability to open up its mouth to roar, that was the coolest part for a five-year-old me. Twin dolphins, deployable side fins because aerodynamics, raising and lowering spoilers because also aerodynamics, and they used to have missiles, but I was five. What do you want from me? Turbo boosters and count them. Eight wheels for some serious zoom zoom. They clip and unclip from each other. Their all metal heads flip up. Base plates open to tuck in their tails like this and like this. The hawk's feet tuck in like this. This yellow button on the back engages the sliding mechanism and with a light pull, that click is so satisfying. 
That extension makes room for the chest plate to detach, revealing the face. The lion's front paws tuck into the shoulder cavities like this. The two hind legs fully swing out to 180 degrees. Light up Live Man's chin grooves to the lion's shoulder blades and re-engage at the sliding mechanism to lock it into place. These flaps on the lion's shins open up, and as the paws get folded in, the fists rotate out. And we are ready for battle. I was never the coolest kid, but this right here made me Mr. Popular at kindergarten for like three weeks, which when you're five years old, three weeks is like 2% of your entire life. So that felt significant at the time. <laughs> Running an eBay search, they spanned the gamut, but this one with the box, yikes. Asking 600 US dollars? Yeah, good luck with selling it for that much. We gotta go back to cars for the next toy on the list. Micro Machines had this insane blip of popularity when I was in school, but by far my phase were these triple slider models. I'm pretty sure these were modeled loosely off of the Ferrari F40. I mean, look at the spoiler and the star wheels. They are called triple siders, short for triple insiders because of this. Bam, but then also bam. <laughs> it's a miracle that I did not lose these adorable teeny tiny cars. It's also a miracle that despite suffering at the hands of my rough five to six year old treatment, these hinges never broke and everything remains fully functioning. What is this? The 10th time I've said it, but they just don't make them like they used to. Next up, we gotta go to Ninja Turtles. Grade one recess, definitely all about this ball right here. Leonardo in a full tuck position, hands on katanas, ready for battle. By the way, there has got to be some sort of psychological test thing with who each of us would choose to be in terms of Ninja Turtles and what that says about us, right? But to round out the childhood toys bit was this right here. I didn't have a ton of action figures as you saw so far in this video, but this one single figurine I have is awesome. Little baby turtle with its short hind legs and tail, but then lift the shell, tuck those hind legs in, pull out the arms like this, straighten the legs like this, then lift and rotate the head, push the assembly back down, close the shell, and Leonardo is fully mutated. It's funny, these are all the toys I had until the age of six or seven, and I couldn't find any other toys in my sister's basement. Thinking back, there was a random blip of pogs for about a year where I still have these keenies, and then another blip where I was, I don't know, I guess sort of peer pressured into Magic the Gathering cards, which I never really enjoyed, but all my friends did at that time. And other than that, it was Lego, which as of now, I have no idea where I put any of those. Taking this walk down memory lane was super fun and interesting, especially since I still do love toys, albeit more so on the display variety, like this Sriracha Dunny, these Play Forever cars, or this Jay Dilla figurine, along with my pickups of Gachapon miniatures when I go to Japan and Taiwan, like these mini luggages, these miniature classic Casio watches in ring form, or this mini Techniques 1200 turntable. If you've never heard of Gachapon, you will definitely want to watch this video right up here. But if you're curious about what I collect now, this video down here is the one for you. I'll leave them both on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch next. But while you're deciding, if you got value from this video, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop.